Mrs. Farmer. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. This, all right, quiet now, is my bird, Americana. <laughs> I have crossed a Rhode Island red, a white leghorn, and an Andalusian blue. And I have suggested to the President of the United States that my red, white, and blue chicken replace the eagle as our national emblem. <laughs> I know that you want to buy war bonds today. I know that you want to end the war and help us to end the war to end all wars. And just in case that you have forgotten your way to the bank, I'm here to help you on the way. Yeah. Well, dig down in your pocket, son. Smile, Francis. And we're going to go to the bank. I know that you can afford a war bond. <laughs> bag and smile. 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 While you are loose about to lose your bag. Smile, boys. That's the style. What? They this is where the war between Mother and I began. She courted the limelight while I hid in her shadows. Life was a powder keg, and Mama was its fuse. Will there really be a morning? Is there such a thing as day? Could I see it from the mountains if I were as tall as they? Has it feet like water lilies? Has it feathers like a bird? Does it come from famous places of which I have never heard? Oh, some scholar. Oh, some sailor. Oh, some wise man from the skies. Please tell this little pilgrim where the place called morning lies. I am a coward. I cannot bear the pain of being happy. That's Keith. I think I'm getting a pimple on my nose. Oh, Francis. Francis, you're wrinkling your father's jacket. Daddy, should I major in literature or journalism? I can't decide. Well, uh, you know, I think you want to consult your mother about this. Women know more about those things sometimes than men do. I ask you, not her. No. not yet reached the goal, but given the chance to go forward with the policies of the last eight years, we shall soon, with the help of God, be in sight of the day when poverty will be banished from this nation. There is no guarantee against poverty equal to a job for every man. That is the primary purpose of the economic policies this administration advocates. I especially rejoice in the effect of our increased national efficiency, the spiritual energy of our people, which will help to bring about... Sit down. How can he say things like that? As long as he's president, he can say whatever he pleases. President Hoover is a fine, fine man. Fine, honest man. A fine, honest man. Stop shoveling food into your mouth. It's bad for the digestion. You have to chew more slowly. Pretty soon there won't be any food to chew. What does that mean? Pass the salt. I saw a soup line today, Mama, not more than five miles from here. Millions of men are out of work and he's preaching optimism. And you, sitting on the porch, reading Emily Dickinson, won't get them fed. Do you have something to say? Then you get out there and say it. Don't come moping in here, criticizing the President of the United States. You have a cure for the ills of society? Then do it. Do I make myself clear? Yes, ma'am. Good. Why aren't you eating your meat? I'm not exactly hungry. You're too thin. She looks anemic. You look anemic. I do yes, not. Yes, you do. Tomorrow I'm going to buy a liver. That's good for the blood. 
And stop poking at your food. Pig, pig. I'm not hungry. I'm not anemic. I don't feel like chewing my food, and I think President Hoover's wrong. You have a talent lately for turning a simple request into an argument. From now on, leave your bad manners outside. I will not have them at my table. This is splendid applesauce, Mrs. Farmer. Homegrown apples, I'll bet. Mm. Remember your uh, victory garden? And the chicken? Mama invented a, a red, white, and blue chicken. <laughs> it died of stage fright, I believe. Oh, no. We put it in a stew. We did not. We gave him a decent burial. Back up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. It's a patriotic song, little sister. I will not have you make fun of it. And the patriotic daughter, Mrs. Farmer. Come on, Mama. Sing for me. You used to love this song, remember? Come on, sing. here, I always think, wouldn't it be nice if Daddy wasn't a doctor? He would come home for supper more often. And if Mother would find something to do all summer long other than stay in the kitchen and can preserves. <sighs> My house is so boring. I'm a bit like yours. My mother... Yeah, she's just a regular mother. What are you reading now? Nietzsche. Who? He's a very well-known philosopher person from the past. Miss McKenzie gave it to me yesterday after we had a talk about my essay for the National Scholastic Contest. You know my favorite hat, the blue one with the brown feather? Mm-hmm. Well, last Sunday morning I couldn't find it anywhere. I searched the whole house. I was really frantic for it. I got down on my knees. I prayed, dear God, please help me find my hat. And then when I went down to get my coat, there it was in the bottom of the closet where I just looked before. And then you remember what happened Monday in class? Mm, Trisha's parents? Exactly. Well, what has Trisha's parents getting killed in an auto accident got to do with your hat? Everything. God didn't have time to save the lives of her parents, but he took the time to show me where my hat was. Where is priorities? That's what I'd like to know. So why are you reading this? What's his name's book? Lottie, I was praying to a God who is dead. So when I asked Miss McKenzie if I could do my essay on why God is such a useless thing, she gave me this book to read. She said it might help. Does it? I don't know yet. Francis, you are a caution. I've only just started it, Lottie. What I don't understand, Miss McKenzie will explain. I'm creating an essay, not a book report. For heaven's sakes. Miss McKenzie submitted my essay, God Dies, to the National Scholastic Contest. My winning kindled Mama's desire for fame. Miss McKenzie, into my essay, the National Scholastic Contest, and I won! Out of the whole country, Mama! $100. I'm a writer, Mama. I'm a writer. <sighs> this calls for a celebration. <laughs> oh, Mama. Oh, oh. oh, I'm so excited. What the heck do we care? What the heck do we care? Francis insisted that we 
use her prize money on household expenses. Oh, now I know some girls who wouldn't do that. Oh. Well, go on, read it. <laughs> go on, Fanny, read it. No one ever came to me and said, Hello? Somebody said, Yes? It wasn't murder. I think God just died of old age. And when I realized that he wasn't anymore, it didn't shock me. Hold on, please. That's all right. Maybe it was because I was never properly impressed with religion. I went to Sunday school and liked the story of that Christ. It made you warm and I have a statement to make. When can you be here? That will be just fine. What's the matter? Nothing that can't be corrected. What is becoming of our country when a young girl gets a hundred dollars for celebrating the death of God? Oh no, they didn't put my name in the paper, did they? Ernest, get my Bible. We are going to have our press conference in here. Mama, don't talk to him. If you don't talk to him, he'll just die out. Put it on the table in a prominent position. Daddy, talk Lottie, to him. Lottie, run upstairs. Get Francis's cream-colored dress. That will photograph him. Lillian, Lillian, Francis. Lottie, Francis, 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 Lottie. Bring it down Mama. to the iron. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to call up the editors of every paper in Seattle. Lillian, Francis has something you want to say. Yes. I think we should just ignore it. I don't want to be in every paper in Seattle. Mom, I'm sorry. Are you telling me that you are willing to let your words be twisted and misrepresented? Would you rather that people thought of you as some kind of a devil worshiper just so you could stay anonymous? Yes. Very well. I will talk to them myself. The press has a way of twisting one's words Mama. unless they're handled properly. Mama. Uh, Lottie, when you're finished, I want you to sit here next to your mother. Mama, stop it! Francis, we have work to do. You're turning this thing into a circus! I? I? You wrote, you wrote that article. That was my first mistake. Francis, stick up for yourself. Don't let them beat you down. I am fighting for you. That was my second mistake. What does that mean? Letting you run crazy! I'll fight my own battles, thank you! Well, this is no longer your cause. They are denouncing you, and I refuse to let it happen. But... Ernest. Ernest. Over there. End of the table. Sit up straight. It was too late to turn back. I proved myself newsworthy. A fact Mama would never forget. Can't she be like other mothers? When I was younger, I used to wish the same thing. Your mother and I were separated then. Finances being what they were, I was two months behind in her payments. She came down to my office dressed in her best finery. And in her hand was a small revolver. She didn't say a word. She just took aim and fired repeatedly. And I dived under my desk, pleading for mercy. The gun was loaded with blanks. Lillian confessed to the police and to the newspapers. She made the front page for a whole week. I didn't press charges. What did you do? I moved back in with her. Why? That's the way it'll be with you, too. She'll humiliate the hell out of you, and you'll come back for more. Why, though? 
I don't know, Francie. I, I just don't know. Well, if that's what love is, I don't want anything to do with it. And I'm never getting married. Maybe. This place will be filled with reporters before you know it. She's not getting me back on the front pages. I hated it then, and I hate it now. daughter was raised on this Bible. This Bible. She is a deeply religious girl. If you were not so backward in your own religious training, you would have seen her essay did not say, this is the death of God. Mama could no more curb her love affair with the press than I could curb my desire to write and to dream. I was about to embark on an intellectual journey that would brand me an enemy in my mother's eyes. I entered the University of Washington as a journalism major, but Sophie Rosenstein lured me into a world I knew nothing about. It's your own life experiences to find the truth. So, so that's boring. all acting yeah. is. Mm. Hey, Stanislavski isn't satisfied with actors who give a technical performance. He trains his actors to be the character, okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? His technique will revolutionize theater. I just know it. Mm. Such a face. What I could do with a face like hers. What I could do with a face like hers. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you're in the journalism department. Mm -hmm. Excellent cheekbones. Great. Good color, too. It's a pretty girl. What in the hell are you doing in the journalism department? Yeah. Are you listening to me? You with the buttercup complexion and shattered eyes. Why a newspaper woman? Because I believe a writer can influence people. Uh-huh. And give them the ability to see reality. Uh-huh. In an honest way. Oh, well, oh, I'm cutting you need a mask. I think I may convert her. <laughs> <laughs> What makes you think you know so much about me? I trust my first impressions. I'm a director. <laughs> You're not mine. I'm not an actress. <coughs> not yet. We'll see. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, John. Now listen. You and Brian are very similar. There's a lot in your past that's like a lot. Professor Williams? Francis. I'm really upset about that article. I mean, I really slaved over it. I know you did, Francis. I don't teach a creative writing course. You give a whole paragraph describing the room. Well, I just wanted the reader to feel the mood of the place. Who, what, where, when, and how in short, concise sentences. I know. That's what I tried to do. I really did. But why can't I describe the way the wallpaper was peeling or the... You can. Your words are fine. That's poetry, not good reporting. Francis, you're wasting your time here. All I ever wanted to do was write. You will. But not news stories. Try the literary department. Well, I tell my mother she respects journalists. The world needs its poets, too. I turned my back on news writing and entered Sophie's world in a lifestyle that seemed unhampered by small town thinking. My friendship with Sophie was my first step away from Mama, and I took it on the run. Do you think I'm Agamemnon? For the bliss of being a writer or an actress, I could endure want, disillusionment, the hatred of my friends, the pangs of my own dissatisfaction with myself. But I should demand in return fame, real, resounding fame. Mm. Oh, my head is spinning. <coughs> Sorry. I can't tell when she's acting, but. Sorry, I didn't mean to break. It was awful. Who's the director here?
Why did you give me this role? I'm a journalist. Tell that to your professor, Miss Farmer. I don't like being lost in a piece of fiction. Why not? I mean, if it's good fiction, why not? I'm not talking about some meaningless Hollywood script. You want to be a newspaper woman so you can get your ideas across to the public, right? Right. Well, Miss Farmer, your words just aren't as effective as Chekhov's. But your ability as an actress, not bad. Are you with us? Do I have a choice? There's a play I'm directing, Alien Corn. I want you to try out for the lead. Just exactly what are your intentions, Miss Rosenstein? Oh. <laughs> the group theater. I want you there. It's the group theater. What am I going to do with you? The group is the home of Odette, Kingsley, Maxwell Anderson, Luther Adler, Lee Strasberg, Harold Plorman, the great creative minds of this country. They're all there. This is as close to Moscow as I can get you. I want you working with writers who, who write from their guts, who aren't afraid of Karl Marx or anyone with original thoughts. People who are dedicated to ideas, who work for something bigger than themselves, who don't conform, who refuse to be bought by Hollywood. Oh, I know, I know. Hollywood, corrupter of the creative spirit. <laughs> you don't belong here. You belong in New York. There's a new world out there, Francis. Don't be afraid. Roosevelt's world. Equality and socialism will never get soaked up again by the rich. Never. I don't understand, Mama. Roosevelt's just trying to get people back to work. Mm -hmm. mm. He's not content to be president. Oh, he wants to be king. Sophie says he's going to save the Sophie country. again. She drives too fast. She talks too fast. She's a lot like you. I beg your pardon. Well, she believes women have minds and should use them. Don't pull at the roots. You will send them right into shock. Sophie's the smartest woman I've ever met, Mama. Sophie, Mama. Sophie, Sophie, whatever happened to Lottie? She didn't have a brain in her head, but at least her motives were sincere. Sophie doesn't have motives. People of her sort. What sort? People of her kind. Are we talking religion, Mama? Are we? Apparently we're not talking. Cloud in the sky. In my day, nice women did not puff on sticks of tobacco. Uh. You certainly do have a green thumb, Mrs. Farmer. Of course, now that you're all grown up, you don't have to listen to me. College girls know it all. I would hate to see what your lungs look like. I'm sure Sophie Rosenberg taught Rosen you that, too. Rosenstein! Taught you that, too. I do not approve of pushy females. <coughs> Blow that smoke in my direction. What is so funny? <laughs> well, you're not exactly a shrinking violet, Mama. I speak out when it is necessary, but I don't push. Sadly, do you want me to be a newspaper woman, Mama? You'll have to choose your own occupation. Just be sure you choose one. Suppose I were to become, say, an actress. I mean, I know that's a ridiculous idea, but no. Not at all. It's not? No. Then if I were to transfer to the drama department, maybe you'd be pleased? Maybe I'd be. Yes. What is so funny? What's going on here? And how long has it been going on? Long enough for me to get the lead in Alien Corn? <laughs> ah, that 
That's how it ought to have gone tonight. I knew it. Why didn't I pull it off? Oh, no. We think you pulled it off, my dear. Yes, we sure didn't do. We? I was pretty good, wasn't I? Hmm. I thought I was good, and I'm not going to waste any breath being humble about it. Even the old war horse was satisfied. For the first time tonight, I found out how good I am. For the first time, I played for people who weren't just friends and felt them coming right up on the platform to me. Why can't the rest of you give a cheer? My God, I played between my brain and spine are jelly. Mm. If it isn't Vienna, it'll be New York. New York's just as good for what I want. I tell you, there isn't anything can stop me now. I'm going to New York. I'm going to New York. It costs money to travel these days, or haven't you heard? This is not the Ukraine. You cannot travel for free with your comrades. Uncle Sam does not support you. Did you read my write-ups? Francis Farmer has that mysterious something. Did you read them? Sit down and finish your breakfast. Well, where were you? You came home at 4 a.m. You're not listening to me, Mama. Am I good? Or is it just the cheekbones? Where were you? I was out! Where the hell do you think I was? Sick! Talk to me. Remember, Mama, all I wanted to do was write. Now I feel like I'm, like I'm smothering a part of myself. I don't know what to do. I mean, why am I acting? Francis Farmer has that mysterious something that separates the actress from the hack. It's not the cheekbones, Francis. It's talent. Oh, Mom. Oh, Mom, thank you. Thank you. For goodness sakes, little girl. I can't breathe. Do you really think so, though, Mama? Because I can't tell. I mean, I New York is too far away. Hollywood is much nicer. But I don't want to do pictures. Get your dishes. I want to be in the theater. Well, we can't finance a trip back east, but if you go to Hollywood, I might be able to come up with a little something. Mama, Sophie's got the whole drama department out selling magazine subscriptions. There's this contest, see? And the winner gets a trip to Moscow via New York. Well, you can send me to New York if you win. What kind of magazine offers free trips to Moscow? Oh, the Moscow part that orders me. Well, does it have a name? Yes. Well... The voice of action. What? Speak up. The voice of action. Hmm. Red journalism. I wouldn't know. I've never read it. No, but your comrades are out there selling it. My comrades. Reading the word. Yes, your comrades. You're being used. You're just too feather-brained to even realize it. You've got it wrong, Mama. All I want is a trip to New York. Sophie Rosenstein has got you in the palm of her hand. Look at you, free love. Girls dressed like boys. Coming home drunk. I will not allow it. It's my life. And I am your mother. You haven't finished your chores. You get back in there, young lady. This isn't a restaurant. You can't eat in here and run. Why are you so angry? You want me to act? How else do you expect me to do it? Huh? Enter me! I can't walk to New York, damn it! There's no theater here, Mama! Mama! You're not my daughter. Frances would never raise her voice to me. Why are we 
arguing about something that isn't going to happen anyway. I'm not going to win it. I'll probably just wind up teaching drama. Or... We'll drive them. What? Don't just stand there. Some people let them stand overnight, but I dry them immediately, and you remember that. I dry them immediately. your daughter going to Russia for the Communist Party. Do you mind all the publicity? Lowell Brown at the Examiner. How long has Francis been a communist? Turn this way, please. John Germany, P.I. Is Miss Farmer a representative of the American Communist Party? Been political? <laughs> Is that your daughter coming? Your daughter give us an interview? What about photos? Can we get some photos, please? Oh, hell! You guys better get out of here. Go on, go on, hurry. Mama! Mama! Mama, it's not what you think! Get away! Get away from here! Stop it! Get away! 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 You let those Russian spies turn you against me. I will never let them. Farmer, what are you trying to get from Russia? The farmer. Please, 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 Probably. It wouldn't be the first time. You found a way to get to New York. I'll send you some money to see you through. I'm going. I don't care what anyone says, I'm going. Leave me, my baby, my, my, my baby. Francis, you're 21. I can't legally stop you. But don't do this to me. Don't go. Mama, you're breaking my heart. Mama's plaintive cries were etched in my heart. I carried this thread of guilt for many years, but I was determined to be accepted by the group theater. It was first Russia, then New York. My journey to Russia and back took over three months. Again, I was scrutinized by the press. The headlines read, Young American Tours Moscow. I returned to New York a minor celebrity. My notoriety rewarded me with an agent, a screen test, and an invitation to a very special gathering. The group theater had just opened Clifford Odette's play, Awake and Sing, to rave reviews. I was about to meet not a mere man, but a hero. You need this. Do the screen test. They'll come to your party next time. I'm not interested in Hollywood, only theater. Honey, you're today's news. Tomorrow, nobody will look at you a second time. Brooks, how are you? Who's the piano player? <clears throat> it's my turn. 
Jules, you lack class. Clifford, your critics are sick of Beethoven. Critics? Don't talk to me about those animals. They want to emasculate me. I identify with Beethoven. Sometimes I think of myself as Beethoven reincarnated. <laughs> Who dares laugh at the best playwright in America? In the world. Who is this? This? I don't know. Finally, a woman who appreciates brilliance. It's my turn. <laughs> well, all this conversation is stifling me. Louder, Julie. He plays like a bar whore. You want to dance? No. Talk. I can talk and dance at the same time. Got to try it. You're not going to swoon, are you? I'm not swooning tight, Mr. Odette. No? I like that. Did you always want to be a writer? I'm an actor. Are you an actress? I'm an actor. I was a worker until I was 12 years old. My father had a newsstand and I helped him. My father uh, peddled salt and I helped him. I had arguments with my father. And then when I was 14, I quit high school and I became an actor. And my father and I haven't, haven't talked since. And I was a lousy actor. I was too tense. I didn't even commit suicide, which I tried to do three times before I was 25. I was angry, that's why I wrote. I was angry with my whole life. Yeah, that's my sad tale. <laughs> well, lies, truth, truth, lies, what difference does it make? This is a damned unattractive room, you know? There's Franchot over there, he's getting rich and I hate that. He sold his soul to Hollywood and I hate that. I bet you love those moving pictures. As a matter of fact, I hate them. Well, 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 well. And what have we got here, huh? An actress. Oh, I doubt that very much. Go back to the farm, my dear. Farms don't excite me. And what does? Beto. Miss Farmer, Francia Tone. Bill tells me that you sat in on rehearsals at the Moscow Art Theater. Yes, well, I had a... Francho is very impressed with the Bolsheviks, the rise of the Russian peasant. I do hope you're not political. I find political women most unamusing. Francho, I'm broke. Let me a hundred dollars. Ha. Uh, you're a rich agent. How about two hundred? Oh, maybe next week. Francis has been offered a test at Paramount. Oh, well, so much for your serious actress. I have no intention of testing. Purple lipstick, satin swimsuit, the perfect pinup. I want to act, damn it. Go on stage. That's why I'm here, to be in the group theater. Powder. I don't wear powder. Ah, but you should. It enhances the complexion. What makes you think you can act? Let me read. I'll show you. But you have no brain, you see. I ask you a question, and you need a writer to put the words into your mouth. At the group, our actresses have minds. All I want is, is to, to act in an Odette's play. Not necessarily. I can think of lots of authors I'd rather work with. Name one. Soroyan, Anderson, Howard. I said one. You're not the only playwright in the world. But I'm the only one that's been kind enough to lend you an ear. What exactly are you offering us? Talent, we've plenty of that. Beauty, go to Hollywood. They adore peach and cream beauties out there. Now, would you like to go out to dinner or not? No. Happy Hollywood, Miss 
Whatever your name was. Odette's was right. Broadway didn't want me. I didn't want Hollywood, and I resented going. But it was a golden trinket dangling in front of me. There's nothing to poverty except spiritual disintegration, and the movie contract offered me the first real security I ever had. But more importantly, it allowed me to get back in Mama's good graces. I can't bear the moments we're apart. When will I see you again? I love you, my darling. Wait for me by the... Pavilion. I'll be there. That's just blind, Bill. Francis. All right, everybody, let's take a break. Ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Acting's tough. <laughs> it's easy for you. It's difficult for no, me. No, thanks. Um, um, I'm sorry, I forgot. Oh, Bill. Bill Anderson. Francis. Farmer, I know, yeah. Well, what do you want? You want a cup of coffee, Francis Farmer? Sure. Or a cup of tea, or drink later, or... <laughs> Maybe dinner sometime? All right, Bill Anderson, why not? Let's have dinner sometime. Is, is that really necessary? I mean, I don't think this character would shave her eyebrows. Wait a minute, I... What are you doing? I... Oh, still, dear. about your acting. This child needs help, Dr. McCulley, not more discipline. His mistakes were the mistakes of an eight-year-old, but you're punishing him like a senior. Jimmy. Jimmy, come out here. Give him another chance. Keep him in school. Let him show you and me and his classmates and the whole school, but most of all himself, that he has it in him to be a man. Wrong set, wrong set. Cut, cut. Uh, that's a print. I'm going to go to the... Lights, everybody. Yeah. Set up scene 24. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Couldn't I do it again? We don't have time. But that was so phony. I didn't believe a word of it. Honey, get ready for the next scene. What scene? Hairdresser, please. Let's go. Couldn't I please take it just one more time? I'll shoot it from this okay. angle. You didn't even hear my lines, did you? Honey, your words couldn't be worse than the scripts. Now, just hit your mark and look pretty. I can't. He's still making always so disjointed. I never know where we are. What are you doing to me? Ugh. My career was skyrocketing, but I was also going through long, morose periods of depression, for I was working at a job I didn't understand. Bill Anderson was the only compatible factor in an irritating complex. He escorted me to premieres, and Hollywood built a fairy tale romance around us. I soon discovered that filmmaking was a professionally humiliating experience. I was expected to be a puppet on and off camera. I had sold my soul for the almighty dollar. As though she sensed my disillusionment with Hollywood, Mama arrived, determined to polish her slightly tarnished star. <laughs> Palm trees are so tall. Well, this is Hollywood. What do you want? This is it. It certainly is. I can't believe that I'm here. I'm taking you to where all the stars go to dinner, and I'm going to buy you the biggest steak they've got. That's a promise. And dancing, too. Well, I'd like that. All right. I didn't know you liked to dance, Mama. Well, of course I do. Why ever not? Your daughter is the finest actress on the lot, Mrs. Farmer. Oh. They've got their eyes on her. Well, it seems to me like you do too, Bill. <laughs> well, yes, ma'am. I'm not much of an actor yet. I think the only person that doesn't know I'm in love with her is Francis. Oh. Well, if you'll excuse me, I know that you two haven't had more than a minute together since you got off the train this afternoon, and there's some people I want to say hello to. It's that kind of a town. You have to see and be seen. See and be seen. I just want to collect a few things to take home. He is such a nice boy. 
It's a friend. For a sensitive actress, you are remarkably blind when it's convenient. You smoke too much. I worry about you all alone out here. Well, don't. I'm too busy to get into trouble. And he's got his feet on the ground, which is what you need. I'm not in love. He loves you. That's all that's important. You leave your romance to Miss Emily Dickinson. Huh. No one's even asked for my hand, Mama. When he does, say yes. I can't hear you! Speak up! I said he wants to marry me. But I'm... I'm not sure I'm ready. Francis! No bride on earth was ready for marriage. Bill is a fine young man. He will take good care of you. Give him my love, little sister. What about mine? Huh? Nothing. I love you. Bye. Do you, William, take this woman, Frances, to be your lawful wedded wife, to have and to hold, to love and to cherish, to honor and obey, through sickness and health from this day forward, till death do you part? I do. Francis, we're... Can't you sleep? Uh, you got an early call tomorrow. Why don't I make you some cocoa, huh? Uh, I'm fine, thanks. You want to run lines? Uh, no, I just, I just want to get into the character. You worried about the script? No, I'm not worried about the script. I'm trying to work on the script. I just need some time to be alone, to think, all right? Make you some cocoa. Stop mothering me. You're overworking. I'm not overworking. Working on something good for a change is all that's keeping me sane. Hawks is a wonderful, wonderful director. He talks to me. We discuss the character, my, my acting choices. It's the first time in this phony town I finally feel like I'm doing something worthwhile. Can't you even understand that? Smoke too much. Makes me nervous. I'm gonna quit. And everything will be all right. See, I just I smoke too much. Everything will be fine. Look, I've told you over and over, I can't go running off it. I like you. You're a swell guy, but I'm just, well, not interested. Besides, I like it here. I know you think there's another man in my life, but you're wrong, really. Hey, Joey. Listen, if I ever feel like saddling up with some wood tramp, you're the first man I'll come looking for, all right? Right now, I gotta get my mind on my job and the song I gotta sing. So you just sit here and enjoy it, okay? All right, here we go, boys. Cut. All oh, right, that's the print. And uh, lunch break, one hour. Close up that one. Lunch break, one hour. It'll lower my voice. When I play my daughter, I'll use a higher range. It's a fine, fine script, Mr. Hawks. 
I know. We discussed it quite thoroughly. Do you want me to take it again? It was perfect, Francis. That's not me when I'm up there. When I'm acting, I am Lotta Morgan. Fine, you're doing fine. Bill phoned. I told him you'd call him back. She chews gum. I used to hate people who did that. I'm sorry, what did you say? Relax, Francis. It's just a picture. You promise you'll tell me if I'm not doing it the way you want? Trust me. It's such a wonderful script. We talked about it, didn't we? I mean... What... What scene are we doing next? We're taking a lunch break. <laughs> Do you know that... When I woke up this morning, I was chewing gum. I was still a lot. I slept in character. You're a fine actress, Francis. But you've got to learn when to stop. This isn't real. My life was becoming intolerable, so I simply stepped out of myself. Hawks sensed I was in pain, but because of artistic differences with the studio, he quit, leaving me alone. The seeds of disintegration were planted. Uh, Where's Mr. Hawks? Gone. Weiler's taken over. Mr. Weiler? Miss Farmer, finish and make up just as soon as you can. We're reshooting the last scene. You're not my director. Will you get into wardrobe, please? I'm not ready. I haven't prepared. Mr. Hawks has me do it. Mr. Hawks is no longer on the picture. Get into wardrobe. Well, who the hell hired you? Where's Hawks? Will you get ready, Miss Farmer? No, you little punk. Miss Farmer will not get ready. I had found new friends, drinking in pills. I had escaped Hollywood. Through alcohol, I had left Miss Farmer behind. As an actress, I was reaching a motion picture zenith. As a woman, I was plunging downhill to the depths of despair. Sorry, guys, I gotta go. Grown man, aspiring artist, out playing ball with kids every day. Just become a coach. How was it? How was what? Work, film. Lousy. I walked out. And don't give me that damn cooperative speech, please. You're on your way to the top. Oh, you're doing your best to wreck it, but. Like it or not, your box office, the fans have latched on to you. The industry's gonna be sick of you, though, if you keep up like this. How about you? You sick of me, too? No, but I'm getting there. It's your goal I reach, not mine. This stardom contradicts everything I believe in. Well, what are you looking for? Art! No, not particularly. Well, that's one thing we agree on, at least. My last film, Come and Get It, was an artistic and box office smash. Like it or not, I was a star. The studio insisted on sending me back home to publicize my latest picture. No one could see I was losing touch with reality, that I could no longer live in this city of celluloid dreamers. And everybody else is already in Seattle. Honest to God, Mr. Zucker, I don't know how to explain it this time. And I got a, I got a drawing room reserved on the Sunset Limited for tomorrow night and everything. I don't think she believes us. I told her you wouldn't put up with this once again right here. Open the door. Francis? Mr. Zucker. 
We are premiering your next picture in your hometown, Seattle, again. And I'm told you refuse to attend. See that someone takes her to wardrobe. She can't go looking like that. I'm not going. And send someone from makeup with her to Seattle. I was kicked out of town. I have no intention of going back. Try to keep your mother out of our hair, Francis. I'm not going to Seattle. You will go where you are told to go. On time. In place. And cooperative. And get rid of her booze. Hollywood is a place where one's dreams can become reality. And here we have one of the great realities, ladies and gentlemen, Francis Farmer. Okay, now, boys and, and lady, uh, we want to keep this short. Francis is very tired, and we don't want to overtax her. But I do want you to meet her mother, Mrs. Lillian Farmer, the lady without whom we all, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know. <laughs> How did you like working with William Wyler and Come and Get It? I didn't. Mr. Wyler is one of her favorite directors. Isn't that what you yeah, said? One of the greatest, one of the absolute mm -hmm. greatest. Where's your husband? And, and Francis was an usherette right here in Seattle. How does he feel about your success? Don't make a problem where there isn't any and take your head off in the house. Miss Farmer, what's your next picture? I have no idea. Uh, what Francis means is that the studio has sworn us to secrecy about that until there's an official announcement. Sorry, fellas. Oh. Oh, Francis, for God's sake. Well, speak up, honey. Um, well... I want to do more films with uh, meaning. I mean, That's right. films about things that are really happening, like uh, uh, the Civil War in, in Spain and, and the lawyers. Uh, and the farmer family is so proud that the governor is going to be at Francis. We've got refreshments back in the kitchen. All right, fellas, Francis, let's go. Just let's go. I'm just going to leave with the communists. You've had your pictures. Now, come on. Come on. Come on. Francis, you're Francis, you're Francis, you're Francis, you're Francis, you're are you still getting money from the communists? And you know it. Francis, open the door. Francis! Uh, where's Daddy? I want Daddy! He's gone to the theater! Huh? Why didn't he wait? Why didn't he wait? Well, you know your father. He, did, he didn't feel up to riding in a limousine. Your dress. You've wrinkled your dress? I'm not going to a premiere. Leave me alone. Francis. The governor is going to be there. Comb your hair. I don't care. I'm tired of all this signing autographs, making speeches. You're not trying. I am trying. Don't you talk to me in that tone of voice. I don't, I don't like these earrings. Where are your pearl ones? These don't suit you at all. Where are they? Do you hear me? Where are they? I told you I'm not going! Whatever is wrong with you? Everything! Last year I was a trap in Seattle. Now the governor wants to shake my hand. Well, he can just kiss it, Mama. He can just kiss it. You have always been contrary, but you are not going to ruin this night. Not this one. Not in our hometown. Do you hear me? Ah! At night sometimes, Mama, my heart beats so hard. It wakes me up. And there I am. Next to the person. My body is his, but not my heart, Mama. <laughs> Get ready. Right now. Mama, I can't feel anything! I can't feel anything! I'm so cold, Mama. I'm so cold. You should go to that theater dressed exactly the way you like. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Farmer, I'll go. But it's me. Whoever that is. <laughs> well, what can I say? I agree.
three. Miss Farmer. Miss Farmer. Miss Farmer. Glamour. You may be the studio publicity man, but if I were you, I'd build her up as a natural beauty for new garbles. <laughs> Mr. Zucker will have a fit. Good. Well, you're wasting your time once she's made up her mind. She won't change it. I should know. Miss Farmer. <laughs> I've ever done. The audience applauded every scene that you were in. Yeah, they were hoping it was over. I'm gonna give Mr. Zucker a call. I think he should have a musical written for you. I'm not doing any more films. I stank. The whole picture stank. Sentimental musical with Mr. Bing Crosby? Hmm? I'm going to New York. That was a good idea of yours, wearing pants and no makeup. The fans loved it. I think that you inherited your flair for publicity from me, Grandpa. Do you know that? The group theater wants me to do a play, an old death play. Golden Boy. Just chock full of left-wing propaganda, I suppose. No, it's about compromise. Mm. I live that thing and I disgust myself. I allowed you to choose my career, my husband. I spend months working on cheap, rotten films. And now you want me to sing? Francis, you're famous. Oh, Mama. <laughs> Mama, look at me. Please, look at me. I can't do this anymore. I have to be with artists. People who care, people whose work I respect. Remember when I wanted to write, Mama? Remember? I had something to say. I still do. I have to go, Mama. Francis, do you want to lose all of this? Lose what? I knew once I reached New York, I'd be saved. I said goodbye to Mama. My heroes were waiting. My golden boy. I was finally doing what I believed in. I had left the darkness behind. In the summer of 37, I joined the group. I was apprehensive and excited. Broadway would now test my skills as an actress. And Odette's had decided to test me as a woman. Harold. Yes? The woman playing Lorna. Francis. Ah, yes, right. I remember. Has she been introduced to the other actors? We met earlier. Miss Francis, this is Julie Farmer. Garfield, Luther Adler, Morris Karnowski, and Lee J. Cobb. This here is Harold Clerman, your director, and I, little me, am your playwright. I wrote this bit of trivia. Clifford. However, make no mistake, I wrote this play to be a hit, a box office sellout, a smash, a love story for the masses. I believe that we're importing a, uh, a name from Hollywood to help with the box office. Let's start. Could that be you, Miss Francis? I doubt it. I hate movies. Even the ones you act in? Particularly the ones I act in. No performances. I'll read it through slowly for meaning. I personally have uh, only contempt for the so-called hero of this piece, Joe Bonaparte. Joe Bonaparte sold out his soul, his music, for money, boxing. However, realizing that he has made a bad bargain, he then proceeds to drive all the other characters in the play crazy for three acts because of his weaknesses. What do you have on your legs? Cotton 
cotton stockings. Lorna Moon wears silk. Francis Farmer doesn't. Stubborn. She won't take direction. When I'm in costume, I'll wear what the director tells me to. How much are we paying you? Scale. Oh, well, we New Yorkers, we don't have money to throw around like they do in Hollywood. My wife, Louise Rayner, she subsidized the production. Otherwise, we could afford to pay you more. I'm not doing it for the money. Why are you doing it? I wanted to work with artists, professional artists. <laughs> yeah, for a minute there, I thought she was Louise. My wife, Louise. She, too, enjoys putting me in my place. Forgive me, Miss Farmer. I've been raped by success. Willingly raped, Clifford. Well, let's get on with it, Harold. You're holding everything up, all this delving into the characters. Act one, scene one. Right. The small Broadway office of Tom Moody, the fight manager. The office is scantily furnished, contains desks, chairs, telephone on desk, couch. With Moody at present is his girl, Lorna Moody. There's a certain quiet glitter about this girl. She is sometimes hard and is more from necessity than choice. Her eyes often hold a soft, sad glance. You're not late. Everybody seems to be taking their time with this. It's a wonderful play. Well, I'm a wonderful writer. I'm doing the best I can. You're terrific for a film star. Thanks. What's this? I've been picketing. You're far too beautiful to be an intellectual. Did you learn your lines? What? Your lines, your lines. Did you memorize your lines? I have a play. Yes, I learned you. your stupid lines. Stupid? I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. I am. I, obviously, the play's brilliant. If you can get past the stupid dialogue. Do you like Beethoven? My wife's in Europe. My husband's in Los Angeles. inside, Miss Farmer, before you get hurt. Roses. May I sit down? You're, uh, you're terrific in the play. You know that, don't you? Your hands are cold. My mother's in the audience. Is your mother as beautiful as you are? I've fallen in love with you, Francis. It's true. May I kiss you? Because he's a desperate guy who always starts out with two strikes against him. 
Because he's a kid at 42 and you're a man at 22. You feel sorry for him. What's wrong with that? What do you get? I told you before, I don't care. I don't believe it. I can't help that. What did he ever do for you? You want to know? He loved me in a world of enemies, of stags and bulls. And I loved him for that. He picked me up in Friskin's Hotel on 39th Street. I was nine weeks behind in my rent. I wasn't in the gutter yet, but I was near. He washed my face. Comb my hair. He stiffened the spot between my shoulder blades. Misery reached out to the misery. Now you're dead. Uh, Clifford Odette, the writer. Oh, my mother, Lillian Farmer. I'm very pleased to meet How you. How do you do? Where'd you get the rose? A friend. A friend, not a lover. <laughs> well, not yet. <laughs> soon. Very soon. Very, very soon. soon. <laughs> Madam. Oh, good luck. My pleasure. Clifford. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that man. Actually, I don't either. Views are terrific. That wasn't me. That was a death to play, right? This was me. I'll slit my throat. Don't do this to me. <laughs> Headlines. Hack writer, hack's throat. Then marry me. When are you going back to Hollywood? Did you hear me? Yes. After the play closes. Well, so much for love. Love walked right in and... Is there any cereal? I'm starving. Tell me to stay. Marry me. Time for a new song. Sentimental ballads tend to put me to sleep. Stay. Golden Boy was a great success. Odette's biggest, the group's biggest, and my first. It ran for a year, and through most of that time, I lived with Odette's. I took his punishment as well as his passion. When the play closed, I was ordered to California to do a film, Ride a Crooked Mile, with my estranged husband. It's a good first morning's work, Francis. Yeah, it went fine, though. I want to thank you again for coming back to do this. I really appreciate Stop it. Stop thanking me, for God's sake. It's the least I could do. A decent thing I've given you in our marriage. I 
still love you. Are you all right? That's too damned hot. gone are you dear it doesn't show a bit you'll be able to finish the picture and then you and hubby can take a nice little vacation make that call How long are you going to be? We need you for the Chicago tour. Clifford, I, I have to talk to you. I, I think I have to get a quick divorce and, and... Why have you deserted me? Oh, Francis, Francis, are you after all just nothing but a movie star? Do you like children? To test them. The idea of motherhood doesn't appeal to me a bit. No, I didn't think it would. You're not thinking of staying with that husband of yours, are you? Oh, Francis. Have you gone back to your bourgeois roots? Do you love me? I adore you. Hurry back. We tour in three weeks. film was over, I got rid of Bill, then the baby. By then, I never knew who the father was anyway. My life was in shambles, my pretty face a joke. I'd married to please and conform. I had every man's dream in my pocket, yet I walked the path of self-destruction. I had rejoined the group in Chicago for the national tour of Golden Boy, but the mask of sanity was slipping away. In its place was a wind-up doll masquerading as a star. The New Yorker wants to do a profile on me. They interviewed Louise, my movie star bride. Look, we're such a charming couple. The reporter found me captivating. May I sit? Drinks are on me, Francis. Note the masochistic plea in her tone. A woman betrayed. May I sit? Actually, she's here to strangle me. She is repulsed by me. I have ruined her. Our love relationship has been aborted. Give me. Poor choice of words. Lay off. Ever since Odette's decided he was a genius, he feels the need to annihilate anyone else with a spark of talent. Luther, Harold, Clifford. To Francis. Our golden girl. Golden girl. Harold, why aren't I doing the London production? Why? I thought you spoke to her. Spoke to her about what? Francis, we've hired another actress in London to play the part of Lorna. I know that. Why do I have to read in the papers? It's because of her we have the financing. 
I want you to stay in the group. Let her cry, Harold. It's good for the complexion. You know, one of these days, someone's gonna... What is someone gonna do one of these days? Why don't you take a walk? You can make a pass at her later. You told me you agreed. If I, I would never have done this behind your back. What difference does it make whether she knew about it or she didn't know about it? You were going to use the other girl anyway. This way, our Francis has had a few more weeks of happiness. You take the check, Clifford. Don't make a scene. You used me. That's true. Why? Why'd you do it? You know how long you made me stay? You would have left us stranded on the road. I had a show to save. You never loved me. It was my name you needed, box office. Lower your voice, we're in public. I don't give a damn. You're a low, stinking, selfish hack. Who's going to remember you in 10 years? Who's going to remember your, your precious London tour? You're not Shakespeare. Shut up. You're not even O'Neill. He couldn't write. You're still the peddler's son out to make it. You are fired. I quit. Ungrateful little starlet. You're a lousy actor, Odette. Oh, I think not, my dear. After all, I managed to fool you. So you did. By the way, Louise is coming in from Europe today, so I... I won't be seeing you again. You were such a fink. That too. I'm in love with Francis Farmer. Harlow, Clarabeau, Hollywood, especially those so-called artists, those theater artists. They spit on the platinum goddesses, but not this cookie. Let me tell you something. I'm too damn smart for them. Come on. Is my slip shy? No, no, no. No, you're OK, honey. Here we go. We're almost here, honey. You're the sweetest eyes. You're the sweetest eyes. OK, here we go, honey. I'm going to get the key in the door. You're going to be OK, baby. Mm -hmm. You're going to be OK. Take two. <laughs> So serious, it's just a movie. Give me a kiss. Mm. Mm. Oh, wait a minute, I forgot my lines. Okay. What am I supposed to say? You're gonna be just fine, baby. Here we go. during that period, most of it eludes me. It was a time of faceless men, miles and miles of hotel corridors, lies whispered in the darkness. Failure was my lover, my constant companion. To excuse what I did by saying I was not rational says nothing. To admit I hated myself says not much more. 
I was possessed of a demon and I wanted to die. My wounded spirit limped and faltered. My conscious mind was fighting for health, yet no one could hear my cries. That's the way those communists work. They use people. Mr. Clifford Odette knew that Francis was a famous movie star, and so he used her in those awful plays of his propaganda. Do you want coffee? They wouldn't permit that kind of nonsense in Hollywood. Francis needs rest, Lillian. She's awfully thin. Lying around all day moping won't cure her. You know how many men I had last week, Mama? Ten. Ten. I'm going to phone that Mr. Zucker up and tell him Francis is ready to go back to work. Did you hear what she said? That wasn't Francis talking. That was New York. All she needs is a week of home cooking and to go back to work. She doesn't want to go back. Are you a mind reader? Your father is part gypsy now. He's going to be telling fortunes for a living. What's my future, Daddy? Is Mama's home cooking going to cure my promiscuity? Headlines, Lillian Farmer's wheat bread snuffs out daughter's sex life. We don't talk that way in Seattle, little sister. How do we talk in Seattle, Mama? I don't think I ever learned the language. I don't fit in here. I don't fit in in Hollywood. I guess I just don't fit in. Listen to me, Francis. Everybody gets a little lonely once in a while. Everybody. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. But I can tell you this. There is one thing that fills the void, and that's work. Good, hard work. Trust me. Troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. While you've a Lucifer to light your bag, smile, boy, that's the style. What's the use of worrying? It never was worth. By the time World War II began, the studio forgave me for deserting them. Not because they liked me, but because I still sold tickets. I decided to bury myself in work. I was a star and I made an effort to live like one before everything crashed down around me. I surrounded myself with the trappings of the rich. I invited Mama down, and she arrived ready to embrace my luxury like a dowager queen. Aren't you hot with that thing on? No, it's linen. I'm talking about your wig. Let's buy you a fur coat. Would you like that? Francis, you bought me a lovely coat yesterday. Hell, I'm rich. I can afford to get you two coats. I can afford to get you four coats if I want. What the hell am I working for? Will you take that thing off your head? I can't. I don't want the servants to recognize me. They think I'm Francis Farmer. They keep asking for my autograph. Who are you? Well, if you don't know, who does? I think you're overworked. Well, make your mind up. You said Hollywood would cure me. Give it time. We're at war. Everybody is on edge. We've always been at war. It's gonna stop soon. Will it? Well, of course it is. Nobody can be at peace when the whole world is in chaos. It's not your mind that's in trouble, Francis. It is the soul of this country. But... then... I might get better. Of course. 
worse than you will get better. The farmers never go under, do they? Never. returned home and I fired the servants. I retreated into a shell of seclusion. I spent my days and nights writing in a journal, delving into the dark corners of my mind, hoping to save myself. Got your lights on. This is a dim out zone. There's a war on, lady. Turn off your lights. Shut the hell up! All right. Get out. You. You've been ringing me up. It's you. Come on. Stand still. Yeah, I know you. Where's your license? Give me that. Find it myself. Cigarettes? Light or oil? Compact. Oh, my dear, we don't have my wallet. It's in my other bag at home. What have you had to drink? Flat foot, I'm not drunk. My license is in my other bag at home. Now all we have to do is to figure out where my home is. I'm misplacing myself, officer. Come on, I'm taking you in. Taking me in? What the hell? What the hell? Let go. Let go of me. You can't sentence me to anything. I haven't done anything. You hereby sentenced to 180 days in jail and... <laughs> I'm not a criminal. Six months probation, and your license is suspended for one year. It's the first offense, damn it. Mrs. Farmer, Mrs. Farmer, is it true that Francis has left Hollywood for good? Francis is the victim of malicious gossip. She has been acting in a film in Mexico City, and while she is at work, the gossip mongers are at play. There is nothing mentally or physically wrong with Francis Farmer. Come on, Ernest. Shoo! 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 Get away! My life was a comic opera. While I was filming in Mexico, my agent rented my house out to strangers. It was beyond my comprehension. I was perched on the edge of a tilted world. Everything seemed absurd. Ah, oh, you're the hospital. I mean, movie stars don't rent rooms, do they? I mean, who's kidding who? Damn it, it's in here! My journal! Somebody stole my journal! Where the hell is it? Operator! Give me the police. This is an emergency. Huh? Who? Oh, yes, I, 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 uh, I, I want to report a robbery. Uh, my property's been stolen. My, 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 my manuscript. They stole my manuscript. Hello, are you there? This is Francis Farmer, and I, 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 I seem to have misplaced my, uh, uh, my house. I, I, See, I, 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 I'm in town shooting this, this this picture called "There's No Escape," and there's the picture that that's it's called. I uh, could you hold hold on? My my eye is twitching. Oh, hello, this. This 
is Mrs. Farmer. Can I help you? I've got the world on a string. I saw Citizen Kane last night. I didn't think much of it. I couldn't understand the plot. Turn your face a bit. I'm so hard my head, it's raw. Well, I told you, use lemon juice on your hair. I tell all my girls, rinse your hair with lemon juice every night. Sweetheart! Now, you gotta hold still. You're yanking my hair! <sighs> Snarls. The camera will magnify these. It'll look like you had rats in your hair. That hurts! Stop it! It hurts! You can't act with your hair, too, looking all stupid. Get out of here! Get out of here! Oh, leave me alone! Oh. Dad, leave me alone! Leave I'll me. leave you alone. You will hear from my oh. lawyers, Miss Farmer. <laughs> by my anger, ready to strike out at anyone. This time I had attacked a colleague who brought charges. I had given them the legal weapon to use against me. Did you report to your probation officer? No. He didn't come around and see me. Were you in a fight at the Nickapaka Hotel? Yes. I was fighting for my country as well as myself. Have you driven a car since you were put on probation? No, I haven't. Only because I couldn't get my hands on one. What was the extent of your drinking? Listen, I put liquor in my orange juice, in my milk, in my coffee. What do you want me to do, starve to death? I drink everything I can get, including Benzedrine. I sentenced you to 180 days. You bastard! For my civil rights, huh? I didn't even see a lawyer. You can't put me in jail without a lawyer? This is against the law! What are you doing to me? Get me out of the law! judge appoint her your legal guardian. Why? Where is she? Just until you're mentally stable. Where is she? I'm not crazy! Mama, no! Please, Mama, don't do this to me! It is obvious to myself and to the doctors who examined her that Francis is insane. It grieves me to say this, but I would rather tell you the truth. My daughter is in a private sanatorium. But I am confident that Francis Pharma will return to us all just as we knew her whole and healthy, and one of Hollywood's most vibrant stars. Excuse me. Insulin shock treatment succeeded in doing only one thing. It deadened my mind to a point where I didn't know if I was dreaming or awake.
don't you like me? take her scissors and cut out her own heart. Snip, snip, snip. Yes, she will. Do you want Mama to kill herself? No. Then forget. In the morning sun, all those bad night dreams will disappear. If they don't, snip, snip, snip. I learned to keep my madness close, for it was my key to freedom. I'd lost all of my civil liberties. I was now the property of Lillian Farmer. what I've got for you. So many wonderful surprises. Fan mail. People do not forget you. Oh, put a little dab of makeup on. We have some friends downstairs come to visit. I don't have any friends. Oh, you look so much better. Do you feel better? You should read some of this fan mail. I telephoned your agent today, and I told him that you should be able to go back to work in a month or two. Of course, I will go with you. I'll see that you have plenty of rest, you're taken care of, have plenty of food. Because you've been overworked, that's all. You have just been overworked. Maybe we'll rent a house in Malibu. Maybe we'll buy one. Hmm? I'm gonna bake you a peach pie. A peach pie. I'm gonna fatten you up. I'm not going back. Or a house in the hills? Fresh air and sunshine. That is all that you need, Francis. Fresh air and sunshine. Well, I'll take care of everything. Don't you even bother your head. beans clean, Francis. Otherwise, we'll have a mess of strings. Yes, Mama. Your hair is losing all its tone. Mm -hmm. Rinse it with lemon juice. I will, Mama. God, I can't have you losing your looks. Well, oh. Francis's looks are just fine. What's that? Speak up, Ernest. He's gone deaf. He said I looked fine. Well, what does he know? You can't hide anything from the camera, little sister. That's why I want you to take a nap and have fresh fruit every day. A week or two, we'll get you in a good photographer. What's the matter with you? Why are you shivering like that? I'm not shivering, I'm fine. Well, if you can't take the cold, go inside. Don't sit there getting a chill. I told you I'm not cold. When did you tell me that? What? When did you say to me that you weren't cold? Daddy. Answer me. Daddy. Daddy. I don't want any photographers. We have to have stills. I'm not going back, Mama. I'm finished. Hollywood doesn't want me, and I don't want it. I'm not going back. 
Are you afraid that you are a has-been? Is that what you're afraid of? When you got out of the sanitarium, you had front page coverage from coast to coast. They do not do that for has-beens. No, they do it for freaks. I made the news because I'm a freak. You I'm made a... the news because you're a star. Now get that through your head. Get it through your head, old lady. Those days are long gone. Long gone. Not if I have anything to say about it. Well, you don't. Everybody knows that you are unstable, Francis. That's why you were put under my guardianship. When I decide that it's time for you to go back to Hollywood, you'll go. Like hell. Francis, let go of me. I'm not your little puppet, Mama. Your movie star days have ended. Is that clear? Now get. Come near me, I'll kill you. I mean it. No, no, Francis. Stop acting like my father. You never were. You've allowed that woman, that, that monster, to suck the life out of you. When she had you under control, she started on me. She's labeled me crazy. No, Francis. Don't you talk to her. Don't you talk to her. You spoiled her silly, and that is why she's so irresponsible. You think you can do anything in the world will forgive you. I won't forgive you for hitting me. Never, never. That's just fine with me, old lady. You got what you wanted. Your precious little film queen's off her rocker. What are you gonna do about it, huh? Oh, shit. Oh, you want to be on the front page? Star stabs Mama Baba. How's that for news, huh? huh? Damn you. Damn you. According to the law, I can't even leave this thinking out without your permission. You own me. Total control. Only guess what? You lose. You can't make me go back to Hollywood. You better make that call. Send me back. Put me away. Do it fast. And so it was on May 22nd, 1945, that I was delivered, tied and bound, to the state asylum, where I would come and go until March of 1950. There was no need for me now to pretend to be sane. I felt a strange sense of relief as I let my mind collapse. They put me in the Washington State Hospital for the insane. For five years, I lived in a world stripped of compassion, brutal to the body and savage to the spirit. Five long years in which someone might have helped me understand what was going on inside of me, but there was no one. I dwelled in a public madhouse rather than the private madhouse Mama ran. No one helped, no one cared. I was locked in a crazy house and told I couldn't be released until I was normal. No one there was normal. Not even the doctors. We were all lost, all depraved. another man in my life, but you're wrong, really. Hey, Joey. Listen, if I ever feel like saddling up with some wood trans, you're the first man I'll come looking for, all right? Right now, I gotta get my mind on my job, and it's time I better sing. You just sit there and enjoy it, eh? <laughs> Farmer, may I have your your autograph, Miss Farmer? I remembered this old picture of you. 
in Life magazine right after I saw your film. Here. You can sign it. Right here. What's your name? Uh, Marion. To Mary. <laughs> that wasn't very nice, Francis. <laughs> you hear me? That wasn't very nice, Francis. Please introduce yourself. My name is Claudia Monroe, and I'm from Elks Ass, Montana. Enough. We know who you are. And what the hell is this tea party all about? What's your name? Why do you insist you're Frances Anderson? Because that's my name. You are Frances Farmer. My name is Frances Anderson. That was your married name. You're divorced. <sighs> so what's still my name? Why do you try to avoid a name that made you famous? Oh, not you too. <laughs> what does that mean? What the hell do you think it means? Mrs. Anderson, do you know why you're here? How should I know? You're the doctor. You tell me. Francis, do you feel mentally ill? <laughs> Answer the doctor. <laughs> According to your mother, she... Um... Leave her out of this. Why are you so antagonistic to your mother? Um, she says that you attacked a neighbor's child and What? That's a lie! That's a filthy lie! If she told you that, she's a liar! Control My mother accuses me of only attacking me just to sit here and take it! Do you recall that particular incident? Doctor, after careful consideration, it is my opinion that the world is not full of sick mothers, it is full of sick doctors. Your mother has requested permission to visit. I told her she could see you on uh, visiting hours. Well, she sent you a package. I feel it would be a good idea to accept it. You must be more cooperative where your mother is concerned. She tells me this is a favorite of yours. Interesting, I must say. I've never been excited by the taste. I've studied your daily reports. Now, let's see. Vulgar, insulting. Yes, arrogant, foul-mouthed, sullen. Just about the same as when you first came here, Francis. We had hoped to have a much better report on you, Francis. Why do you feel you cannot answer my questions? You stupid idiot. You haven't asked me any. Had enough. Francis, sit down. Your mother seems very proud of your accomplishments. Why do you insist that she's persecuting you? Next time you talk to a doc, take a good look. If you listen, good doc, you find out who's nuts in this family. Ask about the time my father tried to put her away. See what she says. She's the actress, not me. Papa's her audience. You too. Yeah, I'm vulgar. I'm hot, so I'm arrogant. You would be too if you were locked up in this nut house all day. Since my precious mother's so concerned, tell her to send me a toothbrush. Tell her my million dollar Hollywood ivories are turning green. We feel it would be a good idea for you to see her, Mother Frances. Do you? Do you? Well, I don't. I think it would be a hideous, horrible, perfectly ghastly idea. I think it would be a perfectly stinking idea. I think it would be the lousiest idea I ever heard of. I won't have it, you hear me? I won't have it. You just ask her here. You just do it. I promise you. I swear to you. I'll kill her. I'll murder her. Let go of me. That's what you want, Anthony. That's what you want. Murder her in the hospital. It's like a family.
I desperately wanted to be released. Mama was the key to freedom. I would take that key and unlock the asylum doors. agrees with me. Don't go acting smart. I didn't mean to. Uh, I, I was trying to joke. I, it just came out wrong. I mean it. I did not come all this way to get on the wrong foot again. No, no I'm sorry, Mama. I, it's my fault. I, I haven't been feeling that well. I'm very tired. Do they have you work? Do you work? I wait. You what? I wait. That doesn't make any sense. Have you made any friends? Do you have friends? Friends? Uh, I've been too busy. Well, that's what I just asked you, Francis. Do you work? You're not making any sense. I don't know. I... I can't remember anything. Do you have a cigarette? Do they let you smoke? Well, everyone else is. But do they allow you to smoke? Did you ask doctor? Did you? You have a very nice doctor, Francis. He is never too busy to talk. You know, I've been keeping very close tabs on you. Why haven't you written me? We're not allowed to have pencils. Why on earth not? They're pointed instruments. Well, of course they're pointed. How else could you write? Think about it, Mama. If you don't want to write, just say so. You don't have to make up silly reasons. I would like a cigarette, please. I'm going to ask Doctor about that pointed instrument story. I think you just made it up. Where are you going? To ask the orderly if I can smoke. Sit down. Sit down. Over there, those people are crazy. Anything could happen. One of them might get violent. I know that. I live here. I sleep with them. I know. Don't you act condescending with me. One word from me, and you will never get out. You pinch your cheeks. You're too pale. Do you want your fans to see you looking so bad? Is that what you want? Do you have a cigarette? I know that you're telling people that it's all my fault. I know that's what you're telling people. It is all my fault. Mama. If... If this is too hard on you, I'm, I, I mean the bus trip and all, you, you don't have to come, it's all right. 
Well, it so happens that I met some very nice ladies on the bus, and we had a good visit. And I promised them that they could meet you. Meet me? Now? I told them that you would be delighted. I can't, Mom. I just can't. You fight me on everything. I'm not fighting you. A few nice ladies want to come and chat, and you make... All right, I'll do it. Good girl. Good. I'm going to tell the doctor you've improved. Would you like that? Good girl. Girl. Come on. Over this way. Come on. Over here. Now, I don't want you to crowd. Now, line up. Over here. Girl, my daughter. Frances Farmer wants to meet you. Isn't she sweet? Isn't she? She still is every inch a star. Smile, baby. Smile. Look at that. Look at that. So I smiled. And I smiled. And I smiled. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Signed? By your mother and father. We are releasing you in the joint custody of your parents. Your father requested it. And because we feel you are well enough to be released, get yourself ready and go quietly. Why'd you finally decide to take me out? Heart's bad. House a little run down. Let's go home. Are you the nurse? Oh, Lillian, it's Francis. Francis. Well, come home to roost, huh? Mm -hmm. Are you doing what I told you to do? Are you insisting that they give you the best directors you will never get anywhere with those studio people unless you stick up for yourself? How's Bill? He is a 
very nice boy, when he asks you to marry him, I want you to say yes. I read here where Dorothy L'Amour has a soundproof dressing room. She can take a nap right on the sound stage. Why don't you ask for something like that? I asked you a question. I really am the nurse, aren't I? Part of the time. And the rest? I don't know. It depends. On what? It depends on what? Francie, she's not like this all the time. Some of the time, it's just as lucid as you and me. Ha! Did you tell her? Ernest, did you tell her? No. Francis, you are back home. You are a free soul only because your mother and your father have been appointed your guardians. If you do not do as you are told, you will be locked up again. Do I make myself clear? Good. Then make us a nice hot tea. Francis, if you try to leave this house, I will send you back to the hospital. Where would I go? told them point blank when they called. She's my daughter and it's like gall and wormwood in my throat to say it, but she is in need of guidance and loving care. I hope you know what it means to be declared insane. Yes, I No, do. you don't. No, you don't tell her. I don't recall exactly. Yes, you do. I do not. Well, then go and get the folder. I'm eating now. Well, stop eating and go and get it. Go on. He's supposed to know these things by heart. He's a lawyer, isn't he? What kind of lawyer is it? Can't remember the law. Which one thing I taught you, Francis, is how to cook. This is very tasty. You never taught me how to cook, Mama. What, what do you call this? Custard. Mm. Delicious. Here it is. What? The folio, for heaven's sake. You asked me to get the folio, didn't you? Oh, yes, I did. All right, I got the folio. All right. Now, people who have been declared incompetent have uh, no civil rights. Have no civil uh, rights. They cannot make a contract or write a will right away. or marry. Or vote, or, or even, sign a check. Or even vote, or sign a check. Or be issued a passport, or bring a legal suit, etc., etc. Et when you are declared insane, you are incompetent. Where are you going? I'm finished. I didn't hear you ask to be excused. Mommy, may I be excused, please? Yes, you may. If you have finished your plate, which you haven't, we shouldn't have waste in this house. May I clear the table, Mommy? Yes, you may. Well, of course you may clear the table. Who needs to be asked that? Land's sakes. Would it be too much of an imposition to ask somebody 
to brighten my corner with a little music. The radio's broken, you know that. I'm not referring to the radio. I am sick and tired of the radio. I want my music. Where is it in here? Then it's upstairs. And get the cards. That's not it. That's not it either. It's a little card. That's it. Well, thank you very much. Yes, it's only a canvas card. Hanging over a mm -hmm. But it wouldn't be my feeling. Just a minute. Dear Mr. Farmer, the superintendent directs me to acknowledge receipt of your letter regarding your daughter, Mrs. Frances Anderson, a patient in this hospital. We are glad to report that Mrs. Anderson appeared before our medical staff today and was found to be sufficiently recovered to warrant a parole. Parole to you and her mother was granted. That was three years ago. Superior Court of the State of Washington. It is the order of this court that Mrs. Frances Farmer Anderson is discharged from the jurisdiction of the state hospital as fully recovered and hereby restored to mental competency and civil rights. This was written over two years ago. Why didn't you tell me? It slipped my mind. You could have taken me out of that place years ago. And you didn't do it. It slipped your mind. But when you got sick, and Danny got sick, and you figured out how expensive a nurse would be. And a housekeeper. And then you figured out how to get the two of them for the price of one. And that price was nothing. Then you let me out. Well, you've been living here at home, so... Shut up! No, I won't. Not this time. You would have liked that, wouldn't you? But I am not crazy. This paper says so. I am legally sane. Certified sane. And I've got the papers to prove it. So don't you ever, ever think of holding that threat over me again. Don't you even think of sending me back. I could have the two of you put away for hiding these papers from me. I'll stick around, Mama. If Papa has to go, I'll be here. Just like I'll be here for you until your time comes. But from now on, I come and go as I please. And I don't ever, ever want to hear another order out of your mouth. Is that clear? From now on, I am your daughter, not your slave. Mama? All right, whatever you want! Good. Whatever I want. I say we all do the dishes. You'll 
go. Possibly. I know it. I know it. You leave me. One day I'll get up with nothing. Nobody. Nobody. No, Mama. After Papa died, Mama and I lived together for some years. During that time, we learned to love one another not as victims or victors, but as mother and daughter. Then, finally, it was a time of tranquility for me. I put the past behind and started a life of introspection. By turning to my first love, writing, I experienced the excitement and joy of my poems being published. I was a writer. The acting roles offered me during those years left me empty. I was determined. No longer would I allow a character to rob me of my newfound identity. I would now live out my life in simple pleasures. I had found my place, the beautiful sunlit morning for which I had waited so long.